One thing I notice when working with clients is that it's always easier to add things to their lives rather than deleting shit. With that, I mean unlearning old behavior patterns, no longer tolerating toxic behaviors from others, releasing old belief systems and conditioning that holds us back as we grow older. Over the course of the last decade, I step-by-step step stopped doing several things in my life that ultimately led me to not only being happier, but also be able to unlock my potential, communicate better, show up as an authentic leader in the space, doing the scary shit, letting go of people who weren't good for me, and so much more. And I shared a reel recently about this on Instagram, but felt the need to go into some more detail as all of these tips truly, truly are life-changing. So that's what we are talking about here today. So in today's episode, I will be diving into exactly what I stopped doing and give you some tips on how you can start practicing them yourself so you can live a better life as well. Starting with number one, I stopped ignoring my intuition. Intuition is your gut instinct, or you might also feel it in your chest area like me. So for me, it either feels like a forward pull when thinking about doing something, or it's like a small alarm bell going off when my intuition senses bullshit. So for example, if you ever had a suspicious feeling about someone and it turned out you were right, that's your intuition. And it's kind of like an energy reader or radar that helps you navigate in your surroundings and note red and green flags. And I've always had a rather good people sensor and I could smell bad eggs from a mile away. However, I ignored it actually when it came to things like trusting my calling to start a blog or speaking up about something in a meeting only then to witness a colleague sharing exactly what I was thinking or ignoring all the alarm clocks ringing like crazy when I decided to give my past relationship another go before I finally called it quits. So when I finally listened to it and truly embraced it and also embraced making decisions based on my intuition only, my life truly changed. And it helped me to leave corporate, leave my past relationship, go on Tinder to find my absolute dream man, sign up with my business mentor for a mastermind, for example, or also go networking events, text my friend at the exact perfect time and so on. It was kind of like I activated a compass that helped me navigate my life towards or to towards better or to prevent me from having like bad experiences as well. And if you're wondering how you can use your intuition, here's my top tip. If you think about something that scares you, like maybe a conversation with your manager or whether to invest in the new system for your business, get still and go inwards for a moment and feel either like in your chest or your tummy area. Does it feel like crazy restrictive when you think about it? That's a not harsh no. Or do you feel a slight forward pull or maybe like a gentle push even towards it, like a nudge that says, just try it, then that's a yes. And that's your intuition, how you tap into it. So just try it out and let me know how it goes. Right, the second and third thing I stopped doing is kind of like a combined thing. And it's one, giving too many fucks about what other people think and stop letting toxic people pollute my vibe. People love to give advice. And whilst I know it's never meant with any harm in mind, sometimes their advice or opinion can be detrimental to your dreams. For example, if it wouldn't have been for the judgment of others, I would have gone vegan a lot sooner. Or if I would have listened to some family members' opinions, I would have never even moved abroad or started my coaching career. I wouldn't be here if I would have listened to other people. That's all I'm saying. If you know you're meant to do something, if your intuition is screaming at you and you just know in your bones it's the right thing to do, you've got to ditch other people's opinion and free yourself to follow the path of life you're meant to be on. So next time you set out to do something, either just do it without others knowing or despite what others say, because you truly know what is best for you. Likewise, a common side effect that you will experience on the journey of personal growth is that you will outgrow others, especially people who haven't been the best to be around. You might notice they are too judgmental, your values don't align with your, with, with your values, or your life goals carry you into completely different directions. And I'd consider myself a rather loyal person, like my bullshit threshold and toxic tolerance are quite high, actually, which is not a good thing, by the way. But when the limit is reached, I have zero problem cutting people out of my life. This might sound harsh to some, but reducing that limit to protect myself on wasting time has been a true game changer for me. Not only are the relationships I do have on a completely different level, meaning they are based on unconditional love and they are also the most supportive they have ever been. 
There is no competing. There is no comparing. There is no jealousy. There's no backstabbing. There's no judgment or anything of that sort. It's just deep understanding and trust between those two people, like me and the other person. And you might have heard already of the saying that you are a mix of the five people you spend most of your time with. So do choose wisely who you let in on your circle and who's on your side, no matter what. Which leads to the next thing. As soon as you know what you want and you know why you want it, you got to take action towards it. So what I stopped doing when it came to, for example, starting this podcast is procrastinating. And I want to go into the depth of why we procrastinate in another episode. But in short, you can see it as a stress response that either has you in freeze and avoidance mode or flight mode where you do anything and everything else uh, except for the thing that you actually want to do. So it's important to first recognize when you are in the excuse finder mode, which is a self-saboteur mode, and then to break out of it and get into action. And I, for example, love using the five second rule by Mel Robbins in which you count down from five and then you, when you reach one, you get up and you just do the thing, even if you don't feel like it. But this also ties into the next point, which is suppressing emotions. Learning to embrace emotions not only has helped me to be more in touch with myself, but to also experience life on a deeper level. But this was also one of the areas I actually worked with a former client of mine as she was struggling with noticing, voicing, and embracing her emotions. So over the course of our time together, she learned to re-include them basically into her life. And she felt more in touch with life than ever before, truly experiencing the highs, but also the lows, and no longer suppressing and bottling everything up. For so long, honestly, we have been conditioned to not express our emotions that we simply just forgot how to deal with them. Heck, most of the time, we don't even know how else to describe them instead of just, yeah, good, or yeah, bad, or I'm fine. There's so much more to it. And so my invitation for you is next time you feel sad, get curious about it, let it out, release it, tears are welcome, and express it. And a tip here is also Google the wheel of emotions so you can just properly name what you're experiencing. So it's like a wheel where you have all the the emotions listed and it can just give you some better vocabulary to express yourself and it will help improve your experience of life big time, I promise. And it's got a lot to do with the next point on my list as well, which is that I stopped blocking my feminine energy. I constantly observe how much in society we push ourselves to be in the masculine energy, to have all the structures and the rules, to work hard and to push limits. But life for me has truly, truly changed when I started to allow myself to also receive, to sit back, to be in the present moment, in the flow, to be playful and to be creative and joyful. It doesn't mean I don't do any work, like heck no, but it means I balance out my feminine and my masculine energy so they support another rather than overpower another. So my top tip here is to embrace more feminine energy through practicing self-care and self-love. So the the uh how do you say like the high the highest form of uh receivership basically and to be fully in the receiver mode so do enjoy those quiet restorative moments to refuel your creativity and out of the box thinking this for me has not only increased my energy levels but also allowed me to go things with more ease and more enjoyment and in the end it's all about falling in love with the process you've heard that drill right Last one, and this is a big one that is kind of underlying all of the other ones. I stopped staying in the comfort zone, aka zone of self-limitation, how a fellow coach lovingly taught me to call it. Growth and change happens outside your comfort zone. Same with confidence and resilience. Unlocking our full potential, becoming an inspiring leader, living our most fulfilling life is not where we feel only safe and comfy, ready to snuggle into bed and sleep our life away. No. It happens when we embrace uncertainty and the unknown. And the reason you feel safe in your comfort zone is because you know it so well. It's predictable. But as Einstein said, if I remember correctly, you can't expect different results from doing the same thing. So my invitation here for you in this episode is to embrace your discomfort zone. If you want to be a confident leader, go out there and do something that freaks you out a little bit. If you want to start a marathon, start running. If you want to write a book, sit down and write. If you want to start a podcast, sit down and record. Like Take the first step, even if it scares the shit out of you. 
You already have all that you need to succeed and you just got to choose it and then do it. Okay, to sum it up, the seven things I stopped doing to live a happy and more fulfilling life are to let other people's opinions stop me, like, no, I'm going to do my own thing. Ignoring my intuition, no, I'm going to listen. Procrastinating on what I want, no, nah, I'm going to take action. Allowing toxic people in my space, nope, no more. You have no entry ticket, sorry. Suppressing emotions, I let it all out. Express all the tears. Staying in the zone of self-limitation, heck no, I want to grow. Blocking my feminine energy, no, I'm here to receive as well. So pick the one that has resonated the most with you as well and practice it for the next week or longer and just see how your life might change too. Be open to it. And if you want any personal tips, do feel free to comment below with your questions or so you can send me a direct message on Instagram. I am here for you and I see you next week or in my DMs. 